give us just a kind of a general your general thoughts on not general thoughts, but kind of summarize how you think yesterday's game went. Yeah. Um, you know, I think you know we did some really good things, and I did think we did things we need to work on. Um, general aspect, we maybe put up 27 points in the first you know half, so which is a plus. We just didn't score after that. Um, you know, it is extremely disappointing to lose four straight. Um, I don't think we've done that in quite a while. So, um, yeah, it's frustrating. But at the end of the day, like, it's still football. Like, we still know how to play it. Um, I think Spencer, by the way, did a, a tremendous job. You know, for it being his first game, you know, I, I think he did a tremendous job, especially handing, handling Todd Bowles' pressures. We knew we were going to get it. He did well with it. You know, unfortunately, we couldn't come out with the win. But I think. I think we played well. I just think we had a few miscues, turnovers, and things like that. Just like football stuff. I mean, we just lost, so um, it's not too much I can, you know, really expand on. But you know, we just just lost the game. Spencer talked a lot about sort of the connection between you and him that y'all found during the game. Can you tell us a little bit about that from your perspective? Yeah, um, I think some of that dates back to even you know OTAs. You know, I, I knew he was a talented, talented guy, a talented quarterback. And I think we just kind of fed off of that. You know, like I said before, he's talented. And so he is young. You know, he, he makes, he makes an, a lot of really good plays. Um, honestly, anybody on the field is pretty much open. Uh, and I think that's really what I like about him. So um, he's, a, he's, a, he's a really, really talented player. And I'm really excited to see him in the next week's game. I think, um, you know, a lot of people should be encouraged. I think people no one should be encouraged, um, you know, that he's so young and did so well, um, even though. Um, you know, the last, the last half, you know, we didn't put up any points, but you can still see the maturity and he's growing uh, in those circumstances. I mean, going against Tampa Bay's defense isn't, it isn't easy. So um, for what he's done, you know, credit to him. And he's only going to get better. I mean, this is his first game. So, you know, just for what he's done so far, I'm really proud of him. And um, I'm really excited to see what he does, you know, next week and going forward. Well, what did you see that made the offense stack in the second half? Yeah. Well, they gave us a different look, and you see that they, you know, they brought a little bit more pressure. And so, you know, obviously when, you know, if I was the defensive coordinator facing a rookie quarterback, I'm going to send pressure as well. So that's exactly what happened, you know, and especially when you got, you know, guys who are hurt and, you know, you got new guys in there. It's going to be a lot different. So they started playing a lot more man in the, in the second half. And, um, you know, it's not that we didn't make the adjustments. We just didn't execute. That's pretty much it, you know. Um, penalties don't help. Um, and, I, and I think that was really it. We just had a lack of explosives. And I think um, that was really it. I, I don't think there was anything that, um, you know, we, we could have we done in terms of adjusting. I think we could have did a little bit more. But at the end of the day, they just played better defense and we played offense. And that's just that simple. I mean, when you can accept that, I feel like you can move forward. I mean, I, I don't think there's any more pride in them saying that, you know, we could have done this, we could have done that. They just, honestly, they played better than we did. This is a no excuse league, obviously, but how, how difficult does it become when you're losing starters yeah. on offense? Yeah, I mean, it's frustrating, but you got to think about it. It's, it's football. I mean, people get hurt and, you know, guys got to step up and make plays. I mean, that's why you drafted these guys. That's why you got these guys from UDFA. That's why you got these guys from free agency. So when guys get hurt, you know, those guys can fill in and do the same job that, you know, other guys are doing. And it is frustrating. I mean, it's frustrating that, you know, guys are, are hurt. But it's not anything frustrating to them. It's just frustrating that they have the injury because those guys want to play. Those guys work all offseason, worked hard, tirelessly in the offseason to come to this season and play. And some of those guys are hurt. Some of the guys are injured. So, um, you know, I feel for those guys. It's frustrating because we have a season that we have a, we have a big opportunity, man. We started off 2-0, and and now we're 2-4. and So we had a huge opportunity at the beginning of the year. And guys start going down. And honestly, it, it just keeps continuing. So um, it's extremely frustrating. But at the end of the day, I mean, we have to we have to win. We have to win with the guys we got. So I think that's the biggest thing is just noticing who you have, um, working off the shrimps that we have, and then and trying to win a game. Jordan, have you seen the, the type of response from the team leadership that you need <laughs> when you're losing four straight when you're in this position? Yeah. Um, you know, leadership is an interesting thing, especially during times like this, because um, for me, I'm not a big rah-rah guy. And that's just me, because I think as a grown man, you shouldn't, you shouldn't need motivation, especially when you have um, family that you're looking after. You have yourself that you're looking after. You have the city that you come from you're looking after. You have New Orleans that you're looking after. 
So for me to, you know, tell another guy that's beside me that he needs to get his stuff together or, you know, you need to lock in a little bit more, I shouldn't have to do that because, you know, you're a grown man. And so especially from the leadership aspect, like, guys are doing a great job, but sometimes a lot of that rah-rah speech and a lot of, you know, talking and talking, it goes in through one ear and out the other. Like, I couldn't tell you what somebody said, you know, yesterday or what somebody said two weeks ago because it, cause in that moment, yeah, it matters then, but after that, you lose it. But the thing is, it has to be something inside of you that, that changes, whether it's preparation, whether that's training, whatever it is. I think it's more so you being a man and looking in the mirror and be like, all right, like, this has to change. Because I feel like if everybody's beating their person across from them, eventually win the game. So it's really, are we being better than them every single play? And it's going from there. John, you mentioned penalties. Uh, three weeks in a row, you guys have had a big play, kind of erased by a shift of motion. Um, yeah. Is that a, a common theme? Is it, you know, like just paying attention to detail? Or what is it? Uh, it's paying attention to detail. Um, that's all it comes down to. I think, um, especially preset penalties are, are, are mental errors. And that's something that we should work on. Um, you know, Clint has really been, you know, on us about that. and. Um, I think it's it's stupid for us to for us to be told that and do it anyway. Um, it happens at the end of the day. Like um, you know, we we make mental errors. We are human, and um, it just sucks that it happens on plays where we make big plays. You know, I think um, me and Spencer was talking today. The, the play that I had, I think we were down three or four, whatever the case is, and you know we'll be going down scoring. You know, we had momentum, things like that. But you know when you when you, you get a when you get a penalty like that and you drives you back, kind of deflates like kind of deflates uh you know the kind of momentum of the game, momentum of the offense, momentum of the drive. So um, and even then we still have a chance to you know still do some stuff. So um, th despite the negative plays, we could always you know have some positive plays in that. So we just have to rebound from the from the negatives that happen in our game. Was there something? Was there something different about? the way that you were maybe utilized in the passing game this week, or was it just that it worked against yeah. the defense at the time? Yeah. Um, I don't know. I mean, truthfully, I couldn't tell you. Um, I think it's just the opportunity just presented itself, and I'm just capitalizing on it. Um, you know, I'm in the pass game. Where I'm just in the game regardless, and however the covers looks and however the route looks, that's when the opportunity is given. Um, and also, I think, you know, Spencer has a lot of trust in me as well. I think tight ends are you know, notoriously for being like security blanket. So um, I'm just trying to be that security blanket for him, you know, whether that's getting a check down or making a play for him. I'm just trying to make plays so we can win. I mean, I think at the end of the day, I think everybody here wants us to win. So I think that's the biggest thing is just how could I get open? How could I make him feel comfortable? Knowing that he's a young quarterback, he just needs somebody to look to to be like, all right, this is somebody I can rely on. And I'm just trying to be that guy. Understanding you aren't a raw raw guy, how does how does a team then like get together to address problems if it's not like yeah. a collective message? Yeah. Does there yeah. need to be a collective message, or like how does yeah. how does that get addressed? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, yeah, and like I said, you you have your guys who are going to you know have those conversations in you know a meeting or you know a group. Or if someone were to host a um, a players only meeting, like those things, I think those things are great. But internally, like you really have to look into yourself and be like, all right, is this some, this something that I'm really doing? And I'm, is this everything that I'm giving? Is this everything that I'm giving to the team? Is everything I'm giving to the organization, to the city? Um, those are things you have to, you know, do yourself. And I think that's more the biggest thing of, of anything because um, I like I like Riz's. Uh, Coach Riz's um, motto, 111, I think. If you're doing your part out of the 11 guys and everybody's doing that exact same thing, I think you're going to have pretty good results. And so, um, and that's not just on the football field. That's in the film room. That's in recovery as well. I think that's just probably one of the biggest things that we have going. And, I, and, and I'm not saying guys aren't doing that, but um, it, it is also a reflection of the scoreboard as well. So um, we, we just have to, like Coach Riz says, we just have to do our 111. You were on here in the back. You scored 20 unanswered points early on in the game or in the second. Yeah. How do you take a – how do you revisit that moment and carry that into a few a few short days into the week? Yeah. Um, you just have to take, um, you know, the, the bad with the good and the good with the bad. Um, I think, you know, scoring those 
points, you know, you really seen the shift. Like you seen, we were really upbeat, and you seen the, the team across the field. They were deflated, and I think um, when you kind of take your foot off the gas, which I don't, I wouldn't say we did, but there's a there's a sort of relaxed state that we had. Um, that kind of allows them to get back into the game, and so um, our biggest thing, and it was, and it was the first um, two games of the season. We always started fast, and so when you started fast, it's like, man, like, all right, we can put up. I remember twice during um, those two games where I was like, we might actually put up sixty points, and I said that twice. And so that's us starting fast and us being hitting on all cylinders. I think that's the biggest thing is just, it. I think it's the trust and the belief, and. Um, to be quite fair, I don't think we have that. And so um, I think if we could, like I said before, if we could look at ourselves and look in the mirror and say that we can do this, then we can. But if you don't think, if you have a doubt, then you're not going to. So I think carrying those 20 points that we've had in, until this week, I think it's the belief and I think it's the preparation that we talked about before. You talk about the, the everybody kind of believing that. Is, is it that? Is your concern that the belief isn't showing up at the game, or is it the early adversity causes that belief? I think it's the belief in general. I mean, we're two and four. We have injuries and stuff like that. And, you know, you, you kind of want to look back to, uh, you know, obviously the, the Kansas City Chiefs are, are a great team. But at some point in the past five years, they were three and five, and they ended up in the postseason and ended up in the Super Bowl. So you, you got to have – and it's, it's good that you have examples like that around the league that – you know, you've had a bad start, but it doesn't have to end that way or, go, or have the course to be that way. And so, um, honestly, it's just belief. And I'm sure they have belief. I'm sure they had a little bit of doubt at the end of the day. It just takes a player or two for everything to click. And be like, oh, we can do this. Or we can rely on this guy. Or we can rely on, you know, this player. Or something like that. It's just, it's just a belief that we have. And so, once you have a belief, I feel like you can do a lot more than we think we can do. So. And for just with you know, starting a rookie quarterback yeah. in his first first debut and everything yeah. like that. How how do you feel that impacts yeah. the potential for that yeah. for that belief? You mentioned being yeah. optimistic about it. Absolutely. And like I said, I have a I have a ton of trust in Spencer. I think Spencer's very talented and I don't think it's him that's even hindering us. I think it's you know, we're we're just in our own way of hindering ourselves. And like I said, that could be preparation, that could be um nutrition, sleep. Just like the little the little like the little stuff. And so um, what are we doing to separate ourselves from or be better than what we were last week? And um, I think that's just the biggest thing. Like, can we sacrifice, you know, these la these next 11 games so we can go do something big? Or are we just going to soak in our sorrows and being 2-4? and four, Or are we going to end this the season like 2-15? Two, two and 15? So, like, let's let's not do that. Let's focus on the next week. You know, DeMario says it best. He says, uh, wrench, wash, and repeat. You know, I, I can't tell you, you know, what that means again, but rinse, wash, and repeat, that's kind of the thing. It's just kind of like washing what we did last week and then, you know, going into next week with a new mindset. So um, that's just the biggest thing is going into a new week with a new mindset and just winning the game. Like, we just, as easy as it sounds, we just have to score more points than the other team. Well, kind of along those lines, rinse, wash, and repeat, the first two weeks, things are building on themselves in all the right ways. You yeah. want things to keep going. Uh, yeah. With these last four games, how do you make sure there's not any sort of here we go again mentality yeah. where a little thing goes wrong and yeah. it becomes a big thing and becomes more than one big yeah. thing? Well, driving yourself insane is probably doing the same thing over and over again. So if we find ourselves, you know, in the hole again, because honestly, we've been spotting teams like the past couple of weeks for, for some odd reason. It's just like, man, here we go. Like, like you said, here we go again. But if we'd be like, all right, you know, just forget it. That's what it is. Like let's just let's just score like we did those twenty points that we did and it was unanswered, and so kind of just having those memories in your mind that we can actually do it, we could actually spot a team seventeen and come back, and now we can win a game instead of losing the lead and losing the game. Uh, it's gonna be like for you seeing Sean on the opposite sideline. Yeah. Know that he was a guy that kind of yeah. had a part in giving you your opportunity. Yeah. Um. I mean, it's going to be great. Uh, I think, you know, um, Sean is obviously a um, Hall of Fame coach. He's a great coach. But then again, he is an opposing coach. So, um, you know, it's just he's just in the way of what we're trying to do, whether that is, you know, the Tampa Bay coach or whether that's a Denver coach or whoever the coach it is. Um, 
I, I think I think we just need to win, man. I think we're, we are we are desperate for a win. Um, losing five games straight is just not something that um, I even want to utter anymore, or or utter at all. And so, um, yeah, it'll be so fun to see them across the across the field. But even bigger than that is is the win that we have because we 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 need to win. I think the city is uh is in is in need of that. We are more in the need of that. And so, uh, and so yeah, we're, we're desperate. Obviously, to that point, you know, this is that's the headline of this matchup, especially on Thursday Night Football. Yeah. How do y'all block out the noise with that? Like, just focus on we need to win. Yeah. Um, I think not listen to it at all. Um, I think that's probably one of the biggest things I know. You got a lot of things going on. You got the you know the Drew ceremony. You got Sean, and then you got you know you know the losing streak, and then you got you know the rookie quarterback. You have all these things that are <clears throat> coming into account, and a lot of those things are distractions. But you know if you kind of just block other distractions by, like we talked about before, just like focusing on what we need to focus on. It's a short week, so you can't really do a whole lot. Like we, we have to be so good with our with our game plan. We have to be so good in being locked in on your keys, being locked in on your preparation. Because literally, I mean, this is kind of an off day, but the next two days are like maybe walkthroughs, and then we're into the game. And so, how are we going to be physically? Because we aren't going against you know our own teammates, um, you know, really hard. Um, how how physical are we going to be? How fast are we going to start? So that's kind of like the biggest thing for us. Um, we just have to block out the noise. I mean, we have to. We literally have to. I mean, we, we don't want to put ourselves in a hole um, after this game. We kind of want to go into you know, this mini buy, you would say, um, feeling pretty good about ourselves going into the next week. Doc, two more. Awesome. Thanks, guys. All right, y'all.